Asus has made some changes to the BIOS in the Sabertooth C97. So let's get a look. Uh, when you first open it up, it will open up into easy mode, as you see here, which basically gives you some uh, basic functions right off the bat. Um, display up top is going to give you all of your information uh, as far as your motherboard, CPU, uh, memory speed, etc. CPU temperature, CPU voltage, motherboard temperature, your DRAM status, SATA information, uh, Intel Rapid Store on and off, and your XMP on and off. Down below you've got your fan profiles with all of your fan readouts and uh, current status, as well as manual fan tuning right next to it. Just hitting on the man manual fan tuning takes you right into the QFAN mode, allowing you to adjust any of your fans right from there. Um, so you do get actual fan curves rather than uh, something more rudimentary. So you've actually got, you know, fan curves that you can actually work with, play with, you know, as you see. So you can actually emulate some type of decent fan control right from within the BIOS rather than having to use a program in Windows. Coming out of there, over on the right, you've got your easy system tuning for normal, Asus Optimal, or power saving modes. And your boot priority right down below. So you can actually switch up uh, your boot priority right from the easy screen. Uh, if you had a USB drive in, for example, it would come up here. You could push it up uh, to the top and actually, you know, boot right from there. So now moving into advanced mode, obviously this is where things get interesting. So open it up, start at the main screen, Obviously, typical main street screen, all of your information laid out, and your language selection right there. Moving on to AI Tweaker. This is where all of your uh, overclocking and your tweaking is going to be done. So, looking through, you've got all your target frequencies right here. Overclock tuner right here. If you've got XMP, you can um, turn it on there, or manual, or auto. Multi-core enhancement, auto or disabled. Your CPU core ratio, you can sync all cores or do a per core and manually do it. Uh, if you do a sync all cores, obviously you just type in right here, or, you know, whatever you're looking to do. And all cores will be set to a multiplier of 40. And we're just going to pop it right back to auto for right now. Uh, your CPU cache ratio, etc. DRAM frequencies. As you go down, overclock tuner. Keep current settings, you, or you can uh, go to ratio tuning or B-clock tuning. EPU power saving mode, all your DRAM timing controls, your Digi power control, which as uh, we saw also, all of this, uh, the Digi power control is available in AI suite as well as part of Thermal Radar 2, which is actually really interesting. Your internal power management for the CPU, so all of your C states, uh, etc., and power saving for the CPU can be accessed right through there, as well as your tur uh, turbo mode. All of your voltage controls are below that, which you can auto or do an offset uh, or manually input. So you've got a good amount of uh, flexibility here, obviously. Uh, more than, you know, we're typically used to seeing on a mainstream board, that's for sure. Uh, maybe not quite as much as an ROG board, but the ROG boards tend to be a little bit busy uh, as it is. So obviously, uh, personally, I think the Sabertooth is a little bit better to work with. Uh, advanced, you've got your CPU configuration once again. You can go through with the power management right through there. All your speed step, turbo mode, C states, etc. PCH configuration, storage configurations. System agent configuration, USB configuration, uh, going down, platform miscellaneous, etc. So all of your advanced settings will be uh, found under the advanced. Uh, I'm going to skip over monitor for just a second. Go to boot, and all of your standard uh, boot functions here, uh, as far as you know, your USB support, your SATA support, are all going to be here, as well as the boot logo, number lock state wait for F1 on error, as well as your boot order and secure boot down here. Uh, your hard drive BBS priorities, you can actually go in and select all of 
which um, you're going to be booting from, and lay them out any way you like. And moving down, just a touch. As you can see, you've got your boot over right here as well, so you can boot from any uh, disc right with a click. And now the monitor, as I say, I wanted to skip over that. This is actually pretty interesting. Um, the Sabertooth, obviously, with the advanced thermals, I uh, want to take advantage of it within the BIOS itself. So you've got QFAN tuning right here, which you can actually start if you hit OK. What it's going to actually do is detect the lowest speed and configure the minimum duty cycle for each fan. So it will detect the lowest and the highest speed of the fan as well. And it's going to set up your silent um, standard turbo modes to that as well as your manual modes for adjusting your fans. Now if you go up to QFAN control, which we saw before, that's where it's all going to be set from. Uh, once you've actually done that, this is where this curve is going to come in. You're not going to have the manual curve until you've actually run the QFAN tuning. And going down, you've got all your monitoring, um, your thermal radar temperatures also are available through BIOS. And of course, all of your fan statuses and the uh, older style fan controls are located down here as well. And this is actually, um, if you take a look, at your curves that we've set up, it actually corresponds here. These will actually change along with the curve as you do them. So you've got quite a bit going on there in uh, terms of fan cooling for the BIOS. So it gives you quite a bit of control. So if you're not into installing AI suite or you don't want to use a third party application, you've got a great amount of uh, control. You've got your easy tuning wizard, which can do um, an auto overclock for you or set up RAID for you. And if you run through the Easy Tuning Wizard, which I obviously don't want to do here, but um, give you a current scenario, select your daily or uh, gaming and media editing or daily computing, select your cooling system. Uh, something to take, take a look at here. It's got box cooler, tower cooler, water cooler, and I'm not sure. Um, obviously, if you're using a good tower cooler like a Cryo Rig R1, that's obviously going to be, or um, you know, an NHD 15, uh, Fantex uh, 14PE, obviously is going to be much better than a small CLC cooler. So um, this is really kind of a misnomer here. Uh, if you've got a top level cooler, you're going to want to use water cooling. Um, obviously, it's not just as, you know, if you've got actual water. It really kind of just doesn't lay it out exactly the way it should be. Not really clearly marked. Uh, top tier cooling, you'll want to use what they're calling water cooling. And moving over to next, it'll give you an estimation of what exactly it's going to do. Up your CPU performance 13%, DRAM 17%. If you hit next, it'll actually go through the tuning. So very, very easy there. You've got a quick notes section. You can actually make notes for yourself. And finally, You've got a favorite section, which allows you to hit F3 and actually go to favorite shortcuts, and you can set that up so you can actually go to your favorites without a problem and get there very quickly. Moving over to finally, the tools. <clears throat> Easy Flash 2 utility for updating your BIOS. Overclocking profiles obviously can be saved by and loaded simply by selecting a profile name, and a profile number to save to, and then can be loaded from that profile later simply by entering the um, number that you want to load from above. And finally, you can also load uh, from and save to a USB drive, and you do need a USB drive installed, obviously, for that to work. So, very flexible, very intuitive BIOS, really easy to get around. Um, like I say, personally, I think they're uh, a little bit less convoluted than the ROG BIOS. Uh, and also gives you obviously a lot more power as far as the thermal tuning without sacrificing any power in overclock tuning. Really beautiful BIOS on the Z97 Sabertooth from Asus.